Good morning, friends. Today at the Gale Library, we're going to be talking about Earth Day. So Earth Day this year is actually on Friday, and it's the 22nd. And it was started by a senator in Wisconsin in 1970 who believed that we needed to be doing more to protect the Earth because it's the only one we have. And so because of that senator and wanting to start Earth Day, we actually started a program, our government program, called the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. And now that sounds like a big, huge company, and it sounds like it's much bigger than any one kid, but there are lots of things that you can do to protect our Earth. And so this first story that I'm going to read you, Earth Day, written by Margaret McNamara, is about the little things that you can do to help the earth. Earth Day was coming. The banners in Mrs. Connor's classroom read, Save the Earth. But Emma did not know how. The other first graders had lots of ideas. I will rescue the polar bears, said Egan. I will plant a forest, said Katie. I will save the dolphins, said Michael. Those are big ideas, said Mrs. Connor. What other ideas can you think of? When Emma was, went home, she was sad. I cannot save the earth, Emma said to her dad. I do not have any big ideas. We can start small, said her dad. Small is no good, said Emma. Small is fine, said her dad. All that week, Emma and her dad did small things to help the earth. They shopped at the farmer's market. Emma brushed her teeth without running the water. Her dad turned off the TV. They went for walks and picked up trash along the way. They sorted cans and bottles. They used their bikes instead of the car. On Earth Day, Egan drew a picture of polar bears. Katie talked about forests. Michael made dolphin noises. Emma thought about all the things she did with her dad. Then she made her list. Her list was not long. Emma's small ideas. Slow down. Recycle. Use only what you need. From then on, Mrs. Connor's class slowed down. They recycled and they used only what they needed to. Emma's small ideas are pretty big, said Mrs. Connor. The earth is safe in your hands. So in that story, there are lots of ideas of things that you can do, really simple things that you can do at your house. If you're not in a room, you turn the lights off and you're saving electricity. If you are using a bottle or a can or plastic, you just wash that out when you're done and you can put it in the recycle bin. And we have a special place at our dump just for recycled materials. Um, we also have one for paper. Paper is something that you can recycle. And if you're, say you're coloring on a, a picture and you don't like that picture, instead of getting a new piece of paper and throwing that one out, you flip it over and use the other side. These little things can add up to big things. So I have a song for you to remind you that we need to help the earth. This is called This Old Earth. This old earth needs our help to stay fresh and clean and green with a pick it up, pitch it in and throw it in a can. This old earth will be clean again. So that's another thing you can do. When you go out on walks, bring with you a, a bag and anytime you see any sort of litter or trash, you probably should wear gloves if you can, you pick that up and you put it in a bag so that that litter goes in its proper place. So the next story I'm going to read to you is called Trillions of Trees. And now this is another thing that you can do. This is by Kurt Silas. We never meant to plant a tree. We wanted to plant something small. A trillion! 
Trillium, said my sister. And so she placed a call. A trillium's a very pretty flower. I'd like to buy a trillium, please, said Lizzie to the man. He thought she said, a trillion trees. That's how it all began. A trillion trees, the salesman said. We'll do our very best. I'll send a thousand right away and order up the rest. Trees, trees, trees. They knocked us to our knees in boxes, bags, and burlap rags. Trees, trees, trees. Our shovel couldn't hack it. We bought a couple more. And then we started digging like we've never dug before. Dig, 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 a filbert and a fig, a beech, a gum, a peach, a plum. Dig, dig, dig. We dug and dug, the ground was hard. We stuck a hundred in our yard. Look at all those trees they have in their yard, but look how many more they have waiting. Trees, 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 another hundred, please. All up and down the streets of town, trees, trees, trees. A county park, a perfect place. We asked permission, just in case. Along the trails and all around, another hundred in the ground. Dig, 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 these apple trees are big. An orchard goes for rows and rows, dig, dig, dig. Plant a windbreak, poplars, pines, stretch them out in perfect lines. Plant another hundred trees, alder, ash, and willow, please. Shade a river, shade a pool. Fish prefer their water cool. Also good, cottonwood. Trilliums, my sister cheers. I just groan and plug my ears. Spruce and hemlock, cedar too, a fir for her, a yew for you, and look, sequoia, these are great. They're tiny now, but just you wait. Look how big that tree is. Chop the ground, pry it back, pull a seedling from your sack. One by one, the trees return to heal the scarring from a burn. Here, the slope is very steep. Plant a hundred, not too deep. Mountain hemlock, sugar pine, Douglas fir is also fine. Hold roots, hold, keep the slope controlled. Grip that mud, stop that flood. Hold roots, hold. They build the soil, they clean the air, they work their wonders everywhere. Billions, trillions trees galore. And thanks to us, a thousand more. We're out of gas, the car is dead. We'll have to use our feet instead. Ow, ow, ow. We're bruised and blistered now. Our knees are weak, our elbows creak. Ow, ow, ow. The truck in the driveway, it's Polly's plant pavilion. Grab a tree. It's going to be a long way to a trillion. There are more than three trillion trees in the world. Late fall or early spring are the best time for planting trees. A lot of people plant their trees too deep. Dig wide so the roots have room. Trees take CO2 out of the air and put oxygen back in. There's a bristlecone pine that's more than 5,000 years old. Little trees get thirsty. Give them water. Always locate underground utilities before you dig. What do you call the skin of a tree? Bark! That was a silly joke. So... Trees do a lot more than just give us shade. As you heard in that story, trees, the roots can hold the soil where it belongs so that if there would be a mudslide, the trees can actually stop that from happening. Um, and that brings us to one of our crafts today. So, you've all seen one of these. It's just a regular old milk or water jug. But what we we have for you to do is to turn it into a place to grow. So I just stuck some plants in there. Those aren't really growing. But what you'll do is you'll put in a little dirt and some seeds. And then you'll close this up and put it in a warm, sunny place. And make sure that you make the soil just damp. You don't want to make it soaked. And there are instructions that come with it. And you can build, start your own little garden. And once your garden has started to grow in here, you can transplant it somewhere outside. Now, 
the seeds that I have for you downstairs on the front porch are some vegetables and herbs because those are are pretty easy to plant and you don't need a lot of space for them you can even transplant them from here into a good size bucket and the other project I have for you today is for you to make a little earth person so that with his little arms and legs and so that you can remember gave a look at him and say what can I do for the earth today Next, I have a little poem about a garden. Now this poem is from a book called Anna's Garden Songs and the poems are by Mary Q. Steele. Peas you sow in early May will clamor up a curly way and bloom for you some pearly day when rain comes down a swirly way. And when the sun comes out to shine, pods will grow about the vine and fatten up all stout and fine then when delicious peas there be for you to eat and me and me so peas are a really really fun thing to grow too because what you can do is you can grow them and make almost like a teepee shape above them and they'll grow around and if you do it just right you can actually go inside the teepee which is a really really fun thing and next I have a book called Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt. This is by Kate Messner. Up in the garden, I stand and plan. My hands full of seeds, my head full of dreams. Spring sun shines down to melt the sleepy snow. Wind whistles through last year's plants and mud sucks at my, bo my rain boots. It's not quite time, Nana says. Down in the dirt, things need to dry out and warm up. What's down there, I ask. Down in the dirt is a whole busy world of earthworms and insects digging and building and stirring up soil. They're already working down in the dirt. Up in the garden, we snap brittle stalks, scoop rusty armfuls, and wheel away weeds for the chickens. While they squabble and scratch, we spread compost over the soil. Down in the dirt, pill bugs chew through last year's leaves. I give a gentle poke. They roll up tight and hide in plated suits of armor, roly-poly round. Up in the garden, it's time to plant. I trail a furrow with my finger and sprinkle seeds in a careful row. Give them a drink, Nana says. We pat them down to snuggle in the dark. Down in the dirt, a tomato wor hornworm rests, waiting for wings and leaves where she'll lay her eggs. Up in the gardens, carrots pl carrot plants sprout, pea blossoms bloom, wasps are on the prowl, and the honeybees visit, legs loaded with pollen. I weed and wilt and sun so strong, even Nana looks for shade. Down in the dirt, earthworms tunnel deep. I'm jealous of their cool, damp, dark. Up in the garden, rain shower. Nana turns the hose on me. Yay! That's a lot of fun to do during the summer, isn't it? I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in Nana's rain. Down in the dirt, water soaks deep, roots drink it in, and long-legged spiders still walk over the streams. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs feast on aphids. Nana crunches green beans. I bite a ripe tomato warm from the sun. Juice dribbles down my chin. Down in the dirt, a robin's beak finds a cricket, a beetle, a grub. Slugs are scrumptious, too. Up in the garden, we pick cukes and zucchini, harvesting into the dark. Bats swoop through the sunflowers, and I pluck June bugs from the basil until it's time for bed. Down in the dirt, skunks work the night shift. They snuffle and dig, gobble, cut worms while I sleep. Up in the garden, a praying mantis wakes to hunt mosquitoes. Nana sprays away the aphids. And I'm after grasshoppers, ready to swoosh, but snap. Someone else is faster. Down in the dirt, a smooth, shining garter snake crunches on his supper. 
Up in the garden the wind grows cold. Pumpkins blush orange and sunflowers bow to September. Nana ties them together to build a house for reading. Down in the dirt an orb weaver spins her web, strand by silken strand. She'll munch on moths tonight. Up in the garden, colored leaves litter the squash vines, and we know the cold is coming. Hurry, hurry, and harvest. But there's enough for the neighbors, too. Down in the dirt, frantic ants gather what we leave behind. They're storing food for cooler days ahead. Up in the garden, frost draws lace on leftover leaves, where secret egg sacs hang waiting for the warm to return. We say goodbye and spread the winter blankets. Down in the dirt, beetles burrow, ants scurry home, earthworms curl tight in the dark. When Grandpa calls us for in for soup and autumn moon is rising, up in the garden, dry corn, corn stalks tremble and the wind smells like winter. But the long, ripe days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladybugs and bumblebees, earthworms and ants are hunkering down, hiding, biding their time, dreaming of sunshine and blossom sprouts, under the bare arms of trees in the blanketing snow, a whole garden sleeps down in the dirt. So as you can see, when you plant something, it's not just good for the earth. It's good for all different kinds of creatures and animals and bugs. And as much as we don't like some bugs, they're really good for the environment. As you can see, they all play a role. The grasshopper feeds the snake. The snakes feed the birds. You know, it's a whole chain of us working together. And the only way we can save our earth is if we work together to keep her clean. So I have one more song about recycling. Just to remind you what little things you can do at home that make a great big impact. This is called the recycling song. Save, save, save your papers, throw them in the bin. We can help to save the earth if we all pitch in. Save, save, save your bottles, throw them in the bin. We can help to save the earth if we all pitch in. Save, save, save your plastic, throw them in the bin. We can help to save the earth if we all pitch in. Save, save, save the cans, throw them in the bin. We can help to save the earth if we all pitch in. So that is all that I have for you guys today. But just a reminder, down on the porch, we have two projects. One, you can make your own little terrarium right at home, start some plants, and you can make a little earth person. So you have a happy Earth Day. Look around, see what things you can do to help your earth. And for now, I will say, so long now, till next time. See you later, alligator and a wild crocodile. Have a good day. Bye-bye.